then one should realize who is the partner in crime. Iran was having complete sanction for last many years, many decades rather. Then how come Iran gains this missile technology and this nuclear technology or uh, uranium enrichment uh, capabilities? How? Of course, somebody was helping Iran from outside. Hello and welcome to the new episode of White News. Today, Iran is under attack. The United States of America and Israel accuse Iran of committing a crime of gaining capability to become a nuclear power. Despite the fact that both these countries are themselves nuclear powers, that is not a crime. But they think if any other country, and particularly any other Muslim country, gains this power, it's a crime. Okay, if it is a crime, then one should realize who is the partner in crime. Iran was having complete sanction for last many years, many decades rather. Then how come Iran gains this missile technology and this nuclear technology or uh, uranium enrichment uh, capabilities? How? Of course, somebody was helping Iran from outside. And who was that? Of course, you don't have to think a lot. It was India. In 2004, uh, U.S. government detected a major breakthrough that Indian nuclear scientists who were the bosses of uh, India's uh, nuclear establishment, NICPL or whatever, Nuclear uh, Corporation of India, their former chiefs, uh, Dr. Surinder Choudhury and Dr. Vyasar Parsad, they were engaged in nuclear proliferation to Iran. This wasn't a small thing because uh, uh, they were doing it from the platforms of uh, India's state nuclear uh, organization. And uh, when they were caught and India was asked it, uh, why India was doing it and an explanation was sought, India straight away decided to sacrifice the nuclear scientists to avoid the direct blame of uh, direct involvement and uh, let me tell you that on 27th September 2004 under the Non-Proliferation Act 2000 United States State Department put sanctions on these two Indian nuclear scientists under uh, federal order FR 58212 and notice number 6969. This was uh, enough uh, for the world to know that uh, India's top official nuclear scientists were sanctioned under uh, proliferation charges to Iran. So they should have been interrogated more. And India's nuclear program should have been sanctioned as well. But India got away, but uh, at the same time, uh, India-US nuclear civil deal was stopped at that time. However, after 10 years, 10 years later, when uh, US President uh, Barack Obama was set to visit India, just a short a little before that visit, American intelligence officials discovered that that Prasad Choudhury network was still active and this time, it was active under the umbrella of India's DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization, and its boss, Avinash Chandra, who was also known as Agni Man in India because he invented the ugly missile system. He was uh, running this network from DRDO. Americans also discovered that uh, the very dubious uh, Agni 3 project that uh, uh, Avinash Chandra was heading that was Agni 3 was also not going in right direction and it was also uh, found in a violation of uh, certain uh, agreements of nuclear technology proliferation and one of uh, these agreements was uh, I think its uh, name was the uh, non-proliferation missile technology MTRC. 
but the main concern for the american was that iran was the biggest ben beneficiary of this nuclear and missile tech proliferation and second that the program was supposed to be of uh, creating or ca ca getting capability of missiles with 500 kg and with their range to 3000 km but it was actually 5000 km what they were preparing and if launched from sea from sub uh, from somewhere in sea it had a very long range and uh, range could be uh, increased from any spot and it was capable of hitting places like united states so their worry was has this avinash chandar DRDO transferred this missile technology to Iran as well and when they tightened the news around the Indians once again as always Indian got away by sacrificing their agni man he was running the project of training 10000 nuclear scientists by 2020 but uh, he was uh, sacked abruptly and uh, India replied to american that it was again not us it was our scientist our agni man who was doing it and we have removed him he was still having he was a very decorated uh, nuclear scientist of india and still had uh, around 2 years of service or 15 months of his service to go but he was sacked abruptly and until today india has not given any uh, satisfactory answer that why he was removed while he was running a wonderful project and he was heading the top indian defense body why was he sacked immediately he has been also giving some of his versions over this but again this was the time 2015 10 years or 9 years after prasad choudhury network was exposed this uh, drdo scam surfaced but how india managed to escape this sanction the sanctions this time india first they abruptly sacked their top uh, boss uh, their top nuclear scientist boss of drdo secondly they promised the american that they will extract some information about uh, iran's nuclear program and also about their missile technology and they will share it with the and they american and they will uh, extract it from uh, avinash chandar and his who are complicit in the team and today whatever you know, americans or israelis are claiming of having knowledge about iran's nuclear program is exactly what india shared through their nuclear proliferation and missile tech proliferation network with americans and israeli we don't know how much they shared but whatever Uh, information today israel or united states are having is uh, is because of that they were caught uh, you know with their pants down and that at that time they got away by making uh, this deal uh, with the american but at the same time there was an individual in iran who was dealing with these uh, uh, matters and he was no other but the head of uh, iranian revolutionary guards a very powerful uh, military organization security organization in iran general qasim sulaimani he was considered to be a pro indian individual and a very anti pakistan general as well he was considered to be running a parallel government in iran he wasn't listening to the iranian uh, government he was very uh, powerful individual and at that time he also allowed indian that they can provide the missile and nuclear technology or help and assistance and get money but also that they can have indian requested they can have the presence of indian intelligence raw research and analysis wing official operators spies whatever in iran it is not possible that uh, the iranian were just asleep when network of uh, indian terrorists like uh, kulbhushan yadav were operating from iran in pakistan so in 2015 uh, this network was exposed 
in 2016. Kulboshan Yadav, the then Iranian, uh, Iran-based Indian raw chief, or you can say station chief, he was arrested from Balochistan, and also at that time, uh, within a short interval, Qasim Soleimani was also assassinated by Israeli drone attack. But it, uh, it is not a coincidence that everything was happening at that very time. However, with the absence of uh, Qasim Soleimani and Kulboshin Yadav from the scene, the Indian network of uh, raw operators in Iran did not disappear. They continued to working and perhaps the Iranian government which was in process of building good relations with Pakistan which have now reached a very uh, wonderful stage, they were uh, also not having the exact uh, idea of how to deal with these uh, Indian raw agents in Iran, how to stop them from operating from uh, Iranian soil. And Pakistani army and Pakistani political leadership held different discussions with the Iranian and Pakistan and Iran also uh, formed a joint mechanism to check this out. And that is why now when Iran realized that the same RAW agents that they were present in Iran were now actually working not against Pakistan but against Iran and for Israel. They were giving all the intelligence and tactical support from Iranian soil to Israelis. So the data was there, their presence was known. So it was very easy for Iran to very softly capture all or almost all these uh, raw agents from Iran who were working or spying or putting even devices in Iranian, uh, Iranian defense installations for Israeli. Around 70 such raw officials have been so far arrested by Iran. Iran has realized that they made a very bad uh, mistake of trusting India because Indians uh, can do anything for money and they cannot be trusted by any uh, Muslim state. Indian social media activists are now uh, very regularly discussing that how was it so easy for Iran to capture Indian national or raw officials, how can they not do it uh, for years and how come they have done it very quickly minded the Indians, Iranians had their data, it was only a matter of time when they wanted to uh, turn them in because it was when they had to realize that they are working against the interests of Iran. One has to remember also that few years back, six Indian Navy officials were arrested by Qatar government for doing espionage activity for Israel. They were tracking down Qatar's uh, defense information and doing it, delivering it to Israel. Just a couple of uh, months back, Qatar again arrested another Indian national in IT sector, again for doing uh, similar activity for Israel. So wherever the Indians are present in Muslim countries, they should always remember, particularly in the Arab world, that they are not there for good with good intention or for real purpose, their actual uh, job has always been to do spying for Israelis and whenever required for India as well. So our argument is that if Iran has committed a crime of uh, making effort to achieve a nuclear uh, capability, then there is a partner in crime. If Iran is being bombed, then Indians should also be at least interrogated and sanctioned. Both parties have documented evidence of this Indian involvement in Iran's missile and nuclear uh, program. So India should not only be made limited to having these uh, sanctions on individual scientists, Indian government should be asked to explain the DRDO's role, 
to explain their uh, nuclear body chief's role and there should be sanctions on Indian nuclear entities, Indian oil companies that were used for uh, uh, these uh, mesolithic uh, proliferation and nuclear proliferation to Iran which were uh, operating under the cover of uh, as oil supply from Iran to India. Those should be sanctioned and even the Indian uh, senior officials like uh, new, uh, National Security Advisor Ajit Kumar Dhawal should be grilled and asked to explain their position. Thank you and good day.